Hello everyone, hi. So this YouTube channel has recently reached 10,000 subscribers and this video is meant to celebrate that and I'm gonna answer some of the questions that I've received about my life and about my studies. And I'm coming to you not from my usual space <laughs> because I'm actually in Norway at the moment. I'm in Trondheim. I'm looking after a friend's dog and his house for a couple of weeks, which is so lovely. I'm really falling hard for Norway. <laughs> so yeah, if you're one of those people that has subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know I'm very picky about the channels I subscribe to so it means a lot to me that you're enjoying the content and the way that it's delivered and that you want to see more and let's get right into the questions. Paul Reads 8141 said I can't believe I spent these years on booktube without following your channel. I'll definitely watch your old videos because I feel I'm being taught something that I've been wanting to learn and that is literature and language. I have two questions for your next video. What is the biggest challenge of learning literature in this time around? Okay, so thank you first of all for your kind words and I think the biggest challenge we're currently facing when it comes to reading is just the fact that it seems very inefficient. I think the world that we're living in where everything can be downloaded within milliseconds and you know you can read a book summary on one page instead of reading the 300 page book and everything interesting about a certain author can be summed up in a 20 second TikTok video. It's just very hard to justify taking the time out to read, you know. I can usually not read more than 20 pages in one go, so it takes me a long time to get through a book. And I think the flashy times that we're living in of social media and fear of missing out on new experiences it can seem like a waste of time however it of course only seems that way it seems like it doesn't immediately change something about your life you don't have flashy facts that you can talk about at the dinner table like it's it's not something immediately applicable in the way that society currently thinks things have to be because apparently currently people think that you know watching like a 20 second video equals learning or something so yeah i just think we're headed in a pretty dark direction as a society when it comes to learning when we equate those you know little snippets of condensed information for real learning and i think that's why at the moment you just as a reader have to be smart enough <laughs> to see where that train is heading you know the craziness that everyone is involved in and you got to be smart enough to take a step back and say okay i'm not going to be a part of that and I'm instead gonna shout out the noise and trust that this novel or this poem that I have in front of me is teaching me everything I need to know right now. The second question you asked was, have you changed as a person after starting your degree? And if so, in what ways? I mean, I hope so. <laughs> so I've started my degree a year ago and I think the biggest change is that it has just given me a real boost of confidence in a way like the fact that I actually took the step and went after my passion and that it's working out is really like it's gratifying and it's it's grounding in a way like I feel like I can trust myself to make good decisions and that I have competence and that I can learn things and that my my interests and my intuition are leading me in the right way. I think that is really something that has 
has been very soothing just to me as a person <laughs> um, and I think I walk this earth a little bit more confident since I have you know taken this step and kind of stood up for myself like hey Nova okay never mind uh, Nova I don't know if you can see here <laughs> okay um, yeah so yeah I think that is the biggest way in which I've changed so thank you so much for the lovely questions okay piano 6391 asked discovered your channel some days ago and absolutely love the content you make oh, thank you so much the question I wanted to ask you how has your taste in books evolved over the past couple of years did it change much since starting since you started studying literature at university okay I mean my tastes have definitely changed I think <laughs> in broad strokes over the course of my life I've really only recently really started to read and appreciate literature like I wasn't the kid that read much you know I know a lot of people who study literature uh, or have booktube channels <laughs> they are like this kid that has had its nose in the books ever since they were five and everyone always knew that's their passion and that's not the case for me um, in fact that was something that made me quite insecure for a long time didn't really read much as a kid not as a teenager either I read some crime novels you know but it was really only in my early 20s that I got into reading and then it was self-help books so it was a lot of non-fiction, um, you know, personal development, spirituality type of books. So I was reading for the content, not really for the language. And it has honestly just been two or three years <laughs> ever since I've gotten into literature, you could say. I know a very drastic shift was uh, reading Tove Didleosen's autobiography um, childhood youth dependency um, and and yeah there was this point where I realized that maybe in those fictional stories in those biographies in those poems there's actually something I can learn about my life that is so much more applicable and resonates so much more with me than you know the dry information of a self-help book and I remember that felt very precious to me like I felt like I discovered something that needed protection my love for literature and I was a little bit afraid that once I started studying that this love would go away or get destroyed um, because it was still so fresh and so weak but actually the opposite happened <laughs> and I I think most notably how my taste has changed just to get back to your actual question is that I've learned to appreciate more kinds of literature and that I'm not so quickly shying away from texts that seem a little bit daunting or difficult or not quite up my alley at first sight I've also really gotten to appreciate essays somehow I really want to read more essays yeah but I think so the best way I can describe it is just that I've it has like opened my field of vision to more different kinds of texts that I can all appreciate for what they are whereas before I felt like my lens was kind of narrow and I would have never gotten the chance to even look into these different kinds of genres or texts all right the next question is from two readers it may concern oh i think i recognize this name that's another booktube channel i think um what do you hope to experience most from a book when you sit down to read do you have a favorite memory associated with reading yeah i think what I hope to experience most is just that I can draw some kind of parallel to my own life and that the book is showing me a new perspective on something that I have 
been thinking about in my life or experiencing. I really love it the most <laughs> when you think about a thing in a specific way and then a book comes along and kind of gently molds that few of yours and makes you consider that maybe you've been thinking too one-sided about the subject. So yeah, that's what I'm most uh, looking forward to. My favorite reading experience, I think it would have to be the first time I read Walden. I lived in Belgium and I think I must have been 22 or something and I I remember I had an exam one day, I still did my education in social work and as a treat after my exam I went to the book sh bookshop and just wanted to buy myself a book. I wasn't sure which one yet but I've heard about Walden and then they had it in English and I bought it and I remember right after I paid I opened the first page and started reading and I couldn't stop reading so I was like walking to the train station all while reading the first pages of this book um, kind of making sure I'm not bumping into anyone because I just felt like it was so urgent that I read this right now and all throughout my way to the train station on the train and then my way home from the train station I just kept my eyes glued to the page and um, yeah it's a really special memory because it's one of my favorite books and <laughs> a, a book that has influenced me a lot that I'm just so glad I found at such a young age <laughs> and that I I still carry with me and it was just the perfect time to read it because it has set me up for you know thinking about life differently and living a life of minimalism in a way and a life that is close to nature yeah I think that's my that's my favorite reading experience uh, what is your favorite non reading related activity okay so I really like music I play piano and I sing so definitely music is a big one and then I'm really into like interior design <laughs> And fashion to an extent I mean I'm not saying that I'm extremely good at those things but I you know watch videos about it think about it um, yeah I really love videography as well and photography I think all of those hobbies can kind of be summed up under the term aesthetics <laughs> like I really like making things look good in the broadest sense possible like yeah I'm just I don't know I'm, I'm sensitive to how things visually present themselves <laughs> and I like to think about that and I don't know I guess train that there's something about that that I really love and a lot of my hobbies kind of evolve around this theme I hope this is not too abstract. <laughs> All right, and your third question is, what did you expect from creating a booktube channel and how has your experience been different from those expectations? Well, <laughs> I mean, I expected nothing and now I have 10,000 subscribers. So <laughs> I would say that is the biggest thing that is different. <laughs> but other than that, I think what has really surprised me is that I thought it would take me a much longer time to be able to articulate my thoughts in front of a camera. Um, I thought it would take me years. I thought that my videos would have really lackluster quality both in terms of the visual videos and how I speak for a really really long time and I think I was surprised at how quickly I picked up on structuring how I speak in a way that I'm happy with it like I'm not saying you know I'm completely happy with it yet but I've made progress for me 
<laughs> in that a lot quicker than I initially thought I would because I was really looking up to you know other booktube channels most notably um, hardcore literature right Benjamin McAvoy and he would make these elaborate videos he just knows so much and you know my jaw just dropped every time I saw one of those and I thought wow if I ever want to get to that level it's gonna take me 10 years and how do I say this without sounding weird you know he has such beautifully researched videos he can articulate himself so well and I always thought well I'm never gonna get there or it's gonna take me 10 years and I think my perspective perspective has shifted a little bit on that um, in that I realized if I you know stick to my own style I can in my own way get there a lot faster than that I also thought I would lose motivation a lot quicker <laughs> you know I've done many things many like creative projects in my life and they've never really reached a lot of people in fact this very YouTube channel has existed for I think eight years and there are so many videos that are now privated that were attempts of mine to you know build some platform around I think the first videos I uploaded were like vegan cooking recipes and then at some point I talked about therapy and I don't know I've always made a few videos about a topic but if no one's really watching yeah the, I, I just I eventually stopped <laughs> but now there's like people expecting a video every week and I'm here for it and it's so motivating and it's so intrinsically part of my life now that I don't even have to think about it anymore and that's because I have an audience you know and that really keeps me motivated like I'm, I'm not even asking myself anymore whether I'm motivated to make a video or not it's just I just do it um, because there's something about you know people actually watching it and appreciating it that is really feeding back into my desire to make content so yeah I think that uh, question of motivation was just suddenly out the window <laughs> and that's, that was very unexpected and the last thing I'll say on this question is I think I didn't anticipate that it would be such a roller coaster ride <laughs> like YouTube is so unpredictable you never know what's gonna happen with one of your videos I mean most recently you know I have had like eight and a half thousand subscribers for the past I don't know six or seven months or something like it just stayed steady and then I uploaded my last video and suddenly it's over 10,000 basically overnight or what feels like overnight and I'm just I'm very glad that I started meditating years before I started this YouTube thing because you really need some equanimity to keep you grounded <laughs> throughout this um, yeah journey of being online okay so thank you for your questions the next one is from Romy4777 do you try to live a life predominantly offline I've gotten that impression you do lots of things that don't involve a screen is it how you just naturally behave or have you implemented strategies slash habits that help you being more present and rather analog yeah so thank you for this question I would say I definitely try to live my life predominantly <laughs> away from screens and a part of that is just I think my natural inclination and how I was raised like we didn't have a TV when I was growing up I was never really used to screens um, and in my previous work you know I worked in the social sector I was always with people I, I never had work that required me to be on a screen and I was always very thankful for that I think in my early 20s I deleted all of my social media like I used to be on Facebook and Instagram <laughs> and that's just 
terrible. Like I just noticed how my my state of mind and how happy I was with myself. Like every time I reinstalled Instagram, it would be like, you know, going down quite drastically. And when I deleted it, just I, I just haven't looked back, you know, I'm really not missing anything. I think it's just something I'm I'm sensitive to. Like I'm very cautious of which kinds of gadgets I bring into my life. You know, I've read Carl Newport's Digital Minimalism, I've read Walden, I have like a hard rule of no electronics in my bedroom. Um, yeah, and I surround myself with people who are also kind of on that track, I would say. I mean, that doesn't mean that I don't <laughs> still have weaknesses. I would say watching YouTube videos is like the one thing that I get sucked into if I do get sucked into something like I spend too much time watching interior design videos on YouTube. I'm just luckily not very drawn to, I don't know, movies or series or computer games or fancy gadgets or something. And I still, you know, struggle sometimes with watching too much YouTube, like when I feel lonely or when I'm procrastinating. I would say YouTube videos are like the one thing <laughs> that are really difficult for me and I have to keep that in check. But I would estimate that I probably spend just a lot less time on screens in general than most people. And I really also intentionally try to do that, right? So. For example, I print everything that I have to read for uni. I print it out and read it on paper. I buy the actual books. Usually, when I'm not traveling, I print out the script I read for a video. And all those things really take hours of screen time away. Um, yeah, what has also really helped me in that regard is that I meditate every day and I do yoga. So I think I'm just, I'm well in touch with myself and I notice when I'm reaching the limits of screen time. The next question is from Not Real Pig. Uh, what do you think about the career of literature majors? I love to read literature and research about it, but for me it's still a hobby. Where I live, literature majors is kind of a hard to build career. Would you tell me more about your future plan when you finished studying or other people in your region? Thank you and I look forward to your point of view. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm maybe not the best person to ask this because I haven't really started studying literature in order to pursue a career. I would say the career paths that are typically associated with my degree are, you know, becoming a librarian, working in some kind of museum, working at a publishing house, um, or maybe staying in research or academia. And, <laughs> you know, none of those sound very appealing to me, to be honest. Like, I think it's quite unlikely that I'll end up doing any of these jobs um, but I I started studying literature because I want to like learn how to think and yeah and I'm hoping to go the route of just you know doing my own thing and becoming self-employed and I'm pretty sure that studying literature will help me with that and you know I mean I think the tip I will give you is talk to people who are actually doing it or have actually done it have studied literature I think we have to be honest with ourselves and say that probably a lot of people who have studied literature are now working something completely different <laughs> yeah I also I have a backup plan you know so my approach to this whole thing is that I want to follow my passion and just do what I love for the sake of loving it right now and then also I have a backup plan you know I, I can always go back to my job in the social sector I can always go back to being a waitress like there's other things I can do my thinking around jobs and making money has really I think shifted over the past years I once heard 
actually when I was doing my previous education there was a there was a man who came to our class talking to us about the job market he was like some kind of um, I don't know he was like an expert on unemployment or something like that and he said that something like 80% of the children that start school today will have a job that doesn't even exist yet so it's you know we shouldn't think in jobs anymore but we should think in what kinds of competences will we need in the future such as teamwork thinking critically um, being creative compassion you know things like that and I really hope to base my learning on those <laughs> and I really believe in those and literature really helps me um, with those competencies and I just, I don't know, something in me just kind of trusts that if I go that path, I'm going to be fine and something will work out. You know, something is already working out. Okay, the next question is from The Real Mountain. You probably get this question a lot, but I see an opportunity and must take it. What is some advice or tips you'd give to someone who is going to study English in university? In brackets, me. I think the biggest tip I would have is please go to the university and talk to the students and talk to the professors before you decide on doing a degree because what you think it's like is probably very different from what it's actually like and that has really helped me a bit over a year ago you know i went to the university of vienna i had some appointments with some teachers i talked to students there i just spent a few days there to make sure that I'm making the right decision because you know your degree is going to be very different from mine in many ways and you really want to make sure that the contents and the people in your department um, that you resonate with all those things so doing that upfront research at the specific university you want to go through to would be definitely my biggest tip actually sit in some lectures and just like live that life or fake live that life for a few days <laughs> to get a feeling for it because it might not be for you you know like a lot of people ask me questions of like yeah i love literature but it's just a hobby it's like that's lovely too you know things can also just be a hobby <laughs> like not everyone is suited to pursue literature in like an academic setting and not everyone has to and that doesn't make your love for books any less valid so yeah i think what i'm trying to say is that doing a degree is a lot more than just reading you know and it might I mean, you probably know that, but um, it's super helpful to just go there and experience it. So that that would be my biggest tip. And then, you know, ask those students how to best prepare or which courses they like or what they don't like about it. Um, yeah. Okay, IY Yusuf46 asked, People tend to criticize literature classes in high school, but I'd like to ask you about one thing you actually found interesting or useful in the manner literature was taught or with respect to the materials discussed at your school. Congrats on the 10K. Thank you. So, I don't think I have anything good to say about <laughs> my German classes in high school or my English classes, or my French classes, or high school in general. <laughs> I didn't really feel like literature was ever taught to me in a way where the passion of a teacher convinced me to look into it more deeply. I don't know, I, I don't have that experience. I mean, I guess the good thing I can say is that we did read Dürrenmatt and we read Goethe, and just merely being exposed to those has most probably planted a seed in me of, you know, being interested in these texts many years later. But that had nothing to do with the teachers, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Kylichens1210 asked, love your videos, what kind of mic and video equipment do you use? Um, I have talked about that in my video about starting a book YouTube channel, so you can check that out. It's still all the same equipment except this mic, which is a Chetty X, I think. Um, I'm not sure yet whether I'm gonna keep that, but that's the only difference to what I've mentioned in that video. Next question, is university free in Austria? Yes, university is free in Austria. All public universities are free. There are private universities and those cost something, but I don't personally know anyone <laughs> who would have felt the need to go to a private university. Definitely most people just use the public university system because I don't know how else could you afford to study. It's already hard enough as it is, you know, having to study and sustain your life at the same time. <laughs> like I cannot imagine what it must feel like to pay for education. Um, and it's honestly pretty disturbing that that is happening in some parts of the world. Okay, Nanti Toef1188 asked, I was wondering what's your mother tongue? I'm learning German at the moment. I really like your accent. And someone else also asked me where I'm from. So I'm from Austria and my mother tongue is German. <laughs> Probably not the kind of German that you learn when you learn German but a thick Austrian countryside accent kind of German. <laughs> Med student 2106 asked, I'm a preclinical student, yet I've always been interested in literature. Any tips or advice on how to advance in this field in parallel with my studies? I would check out Benjamin McAvoy's channel, Hardcore Literature. He has like a book club on Patreon that is really amazing and he goes through a lot of the classics and provides very in-depth lectures and I think if you know your main focus is something else it's such a lovely option to be part of that book club and to get such high quality lectures and sort of read on the side um, yeah I think that's what I would do in this case in fact that's what i did <laughs> before i studied literature i still had my old job and i was just part of this book club and it really nurtured my love and deepened my understanding and my appreciation for literature so yeah i'll maybe i'll just link his channel down below but yeah careful if you are anything like me you might just end up studying literature because you enjoy it so much uh someone asked do you like movies? Um, not really. <laughs> I don't know. Like I've rarely ever watched a movie and kept thinking about it. It's just not a medium that resonates with me very much. So no, not really. I also get very bored staring at a screen. <laughs> Maybe I haven't seen the right movies, but um, not very drawn to movies as a medium. Question that is kind of dovetailing with that one is what makes reading special? What in particular makes it unique from looking at a painting or listening to music that does it for you? I think what I really like about reading is that I have to so actively participate in the act of understanding it and that is what I do not like about movies is that they already on a silver platter give to me you know all the information what the characters look like how they look at each other what the surrounding is like the sounds um, and with a book I have to conjure that up within myself and I just I just prefer that <laughs> I truly think it's the highest form of art because of that mysterious relationship between the author and the words and the person reading it that it's like a unique experience every time um yeah that that really does it for me <laughs> yeah i feel very spoiled with good books and that is also i think why i don't enjoy movies as much anymore one movie i've watched in the past year though that has stuck with me um was called the zone of interest 
very good movie and very literary i would say so you know there's always exceptions i just usually when i watch a movie or a series i just feel like it's a bit of a waste of my time so i don't know i don't feel very drawn to it dr g bass asked hearty congratulations for everything my question is how do you organize your personal insights on comparative literature uh, so thank you first of all i I think this question deserves a separate video and I might make that. I don't really have one place where I organize my insights. I just keep all my notes in folders and I kind of know <laughs> where to find them. And then also I make these videos, right, which help me, which are somewhat essay style and they help me combine the information that I found into something of my own um, but I don't have like a commonplace book if that is what you mean I've just been caught in a thought spiral for five minutes so I think I think it deserves its own <laughs> video so I'll have to postpone that question for a little bit Hadi al 1436 38 sorry asked do you cook if so what's the dish you're most good at so I do cook and I love cooking and I there was a time when I cooked a lot when I went vegan in my early 20s I used to spend all the time in the kitchen and in fact one of my dreams was to one day open like a breakfast bar of all vegan food um, or a cafe or something like that yeah and I used to spend my weekends just making fancy vegan treats and cheesecakes and things so I do love to cook I just live alone at the moment and it's a bit, little bit more of a yeah it's just not as fun to cook when you're alone so I don't do it as much anymore but I do like it I do like it and I think what I most like making or my my specialty will be pancakes <laughs> i really love making like really good pancakes with wild blueberries and coconut levy asked i'd love to hear about why you decided to go to uni and study literature later in life and what you did before that if you don't mind sharing was it a difficult decision and congrats on soon reaching 10k thank you so much So, what made me decide to go study literature? I think I just always loved learning and thinking about things. And I realized that after I've been working at my old job for a few years, I needed like intellectual stimulation. <laughs> I loved my old job. I worked on an organic dynamic farm with people with mental disabilities and it was a beautiful place. I learned so much and I, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. It's just that after some years I realized that I was kind of doing the same thing every day and that I had such a thirst for learning things and I had such a thirst for literature and languages and things that had nothing to do with my actual work so you know I, I was just getting a little itchy about doing something else and then I did some research and I didn't find comparative literature for a long time I didn't even know it existed you know so I was this close to just studying German German literature Germanistic we call it mm. But then when I found comparative literature, I just felt like, yes, this hits, you know, the nail on the head. I feel so excited about this. Um, and yeah, after talking it through with my friends and family and also realizing that I would be financially covered because I'm very lucky and I live in Austria and I actually get paid for studying because there's this law in Austria that if you're below 35 and you don't have a university degree yet and you've already worked for four years, then you get a stipend. So um, I get like a thousand euros a month for studying and 
<laughs> in the first year I actually got a lot more than that because of some other thing I don't know it's too complicated to to elaborate on but you know that was a big piece of the puzzle where I felt like wow okay I'm even gonna be financially fine and I love it now there is like no reason not to at least give it a try but it was still a difficult decision I don't know I think those big life changes are always difficult Silviana Condenso 3137 asked how did your parents take it <laughs> so how did my parents take my decision to study literature they were fine you know my parents are great I think they always wanted me and my siblings to do something that we love so you know they're very supportive at the same time my mom is always a bit worried you know when when I'm not taking the conventional route and she asks question of like how am I gonna make money and which jobs can you do and da 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 and I just reassured her that you know in the worst case scenario I can always go back and work in the social sector so there's really no harm in at least trying and I think that really put her at ease yeah and other than that they're just they're very supportive and and really sweet and I really <laughs> I really appreciate them Elf5948 asked I'm a musician so my curiosity was piqued when you mentioned your pension for metal in your teens do you still listen to any metal and could you tell us what you've been listening to of late genres artists and your favorites thank you so yes I definitely still listen to metal I would just say that I also listen to a lot of other music now whereas in my teens I listened to almost exclusively metal I, I wrote down a little bit of a list of bands I'm currently listening to so let's start with metal and then I'll just go over to not metal so metal bands I still really love and listen to are Ulver probably my favorite band of all time uh, Ohm, Urfaust, Bölzer, Agerloch Bellwitch also I absolutely loved Bellwitch ever since you know the day I first heard them um, Earth, Electric Wizard, Bathory was always one of my favorites Burzum, I mean I'm in Norway right now so I'm definitely listening to some Burzum even though I rarely make it through an entire album to be honest Mogwa, Typo Negative, Miss Firming Death Spell Omega, The Devil's Blood. So, yeah, those for me are some classics that I don't know, I'll probably continue to listen to for the rest of my life, honestly. And then some other music that I like listening to at the moment Massive Attack, Portishead, Elsian, Kruder und Dorfmeister, Tosca. Uh, Boren und der Club of Gore is an amazing band. They make like dark jazz. And if you're. It's like the, they have two albums the one with the skull on it, and the other one is called Piano Nights. And they're perfect for when you're up in the middle of the night and you feel like no one else is awake at that hour and you're just having like deep contemplative hours with yourself <laughs> they're they're amazing i also really love this band called the gotan project they make tango music they have an album la revancha del tango i'm listening to that uh, non-stop at the moment i really like nils fram olafur arnolds hanya rani i also really like french pop lately like there's this album by polo and pan and caravel that is amazing I really like Air and Angel. There's this amazing Ukrainian band called Daka Braka. They have a great KEXB live video. I'm gonna link it down below. It's, it's just such experimental and unique music. I absolutely love it. Then I'm a big fan of Lana Del Rey. I really like Fever Ray, Chelsea Wolfe, Kerala Dust. Regina Spector, Falco, I'm listening to 
lately. Some other favorites of mine are like Pink Floyd and uh, Dead Can Dance. It's also a great band. Soap and Skin, Austrian musician that hits me so hard every time I listen to it that I barely ever listen to her stuff <laughs> because I can't emotionally take it. And yeah, I also really like classical music. There is this playlist on Spotify that I've been listening to while I was studying or in between my lectures and before my exams. It's called Fast Bach for Concentration or something or Fast Bach for Focus. And it's really it felt like it was cleaning out my brain in between all the exams. It was really great. So yeah, thank you for your question. I hope that answered some of that. Uh, Giselle Van 45 59 said hello very lovely video you speak very eloquently so it's nice to listen to you a bit off topic question if you wouldn't mind but how long have you lived in vienna what do you think about this city i'm an art student for five years and have moved around quite a bit i'm considering moving to vienna for both work and life just wanted to hear your thoughts about the atmosphere and life of the city okay so yeah, thank you for your kind words again. I don't actually live in Vienna, so I'm probably not the best person to ask this. I do study in Vienna though, so I can definitely tell you something about the atmosphere. And I think it's a beautiful and lovely city to live in. There is so much to do, especially if you're into art. It's you know vienna is like an oyster i mean i have a lot of friends who live in vienna and it's a very livable city it has great transportation system if you're into art there's something to do you know basically every evening like whenever i'm in vienna i get huge fomo <laughs> and um yeah, I think describing from, from what you're into, you'd probably really enjoy Vienna and from the cities that I've been to, I would say it's one of the most beautiful ones to live in. I would kind of refer you to another booktuber though. Her name is Luisa Marianne. I actually know her personally now. <laughs> we saw each other once and she she studies comparative literature also at the University of Vienna. And she makes more vlogs about living in Vienna and I don't know, maybe you could ask her, you know, but I, I don't think you can go wrong. It strikes me as a pretty cool place and I mean, I've contemplated moving there many times as well. So yeah, if you come over, let me know. <laughs> Bren Booth Jones said, love your videos, congrats on 10k. If you were stuck on a desert island and you could only bring 10 books with you, what would they be? Oh, okay, so first of all, I recognize your name. <laughs> I'll link Brand Booth Jones's YouTube channel down below. I really enjoy listening to his videos, mostly because his voice is very relaxing. So, you know, maybe some of you want to check him out. Yeah, 10 books. You know, the first one that immediately sprang to mind was the essays of Rolf Waldo Emerson. Can't really explain why, but that would have to be the first one. And then I thought I would probably bring a dictionary of every language I know. So that would be five dictionaries. <laughs> <laughs> so just that I can like keep learning the language and deepen my vocabulary, I guess. Then I would probably bring, there's this Achenoa gardening book about living self-sustained of the organic veggies that you grow. I would probably bring that so that hopefully I can uh, grow some food for myself. So that's seven. Then of course I would have to bring the entirety of Marcel Proust's In Search of Last Time. <laughs> that is, you know, my favorite book. So, and that's gonna keep me busy for a while. Number nine would be, I can't quite remember the name, but there's this Kundalini yoga book with like all these complicated yoga poses and breathing exercises that apparently lead to a Kundalini awakening. And I remember I read that once and I thought, who has time to do, you know, breathing exercises for two hours every day? But maybe when I'm stuck on a desert island, I would have time to do that. That could be fun 
to get into. For the last one, I think it would just have to be the collected works of Shakespeare, because I can imagine being stuck on a desert island, I would really miss people. And his characters are so vibrant and so diverse and so endlessly studyable. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm endlessly able to study them and draw something from them. So yeah, those would be some good pastimes, I think. Thanks for the question. Okay, Vig Dragon asked a lot of questions, many of them I've kind of already answered, but I'll go through the rest now. Can you say a sentence in German, please? Entscheidend für eine Idee ist nie, wie sie sich verwirklicht sondern was sie an Wirklichkeit enthält. If you could learn a language, any language you aren't currently learning, in an instant, which one would you pick? I think I would pick Portuguese. The reason I say that is because I'd love to learn Portuguese, but I suspect that I'm gonna have a very difficult time with it. <laughs> like to me, it's a kind of an intimidating language when I hear it spoken or written. I'm like, oh, that's gonna give me gonna give me quite some pain when learning it so it would be amazing to have that in an instant and I think other than that I would say Russian because it's kind of the same situation where it's one I would really like to know but <laughs> it's gonna be very difficult to learn oh I love this one my aunt has a cheeky chokingly saying reading is useless the smart already know what's going to be written in the book and the dumb will not understand it either way. Do you have any thoughts on that? It's a joke, of course, but might still be interesting. Part of me agrees. I just think it's like meditation, you know. It's still important to keep doing it and to be humble and to remind yourself of it every day. Even if you think you're on the right track or you already got it. I don't know. I've had I've had uh, you know more incidences than I can count in my life where I thought I I knew something and then well I was uh, proven otherwise. So I would be a little bit careful and uh, stay on the side of humility on that one. The TFC concept said. Hi Maria, Franklin here. I have quite a handful of questions for you. One, do you live alone? The quiet in your videos makes me feel like you stay somewhere alone, somewhere away from people. <laughs> I love such quiet, honestly. Um, yes, I do live alone in my apartment, but I do live in the middle of a city, so it's not actually that quiet. But I would say my apartment is definitely my safe space and my haven and my introvert cave. Do you work with a team or do you do all the editing of your videos yourself? Yes, I do everything myself and I intend to keep it that way. Someone else asked, my question is, how can you afford studying and even moving to France? I mean financially and also while being in a relationship slash married. Okay, <laughs> so uh, first of all, I'm not in a relationship and I'm not married. Also, if I would be in a relationship, I wouldn't let that stop me from studying in Paris. It's not like Paris is on the other side of the world, it's a night train away. In terms of affording it financially, I mean, again, it's just <laughs> amazing to live in Austria. I get the stipend, I get like a top up on my stipend when I go to live abroad, I get an extra amount of money from the Erasmus program. So I'm getting like several hundreds of euros extra every month in order to put towards rent and food in Paris. I also have some savings that I am not shy of dipping into if I have to, because this is really important to me. Okay, some last questions. Do you use dictionaries to get through books? No, I don't do that. Um, usually when I feel the need to have a dictionary, I have just chosen a book that is too difficult for me. I don't like the flow of reading to be constantly interrupted by looking words up. And it's usually not important to understand every word. And if I feel like I can't follow the plot, then I just need to take a step back and maybe choose a little bit of an easier book for that particular language. Lana OU8VU asked, I was just curious, is there a possibility that you are starting a book club? 
that would be so awesome okay so <laughs> i have intentionally put this question at the end of the video because i thought if you're still watching this then i consider you inner circle and i want to hear your opinion about it because i've definitely thought about doing a book club i've actually even somewhat planned it out over the course of the last year and my plan was you know to go to some platform like patreon for example and do like a little bit of a membership fee a few euros a month and then people can join and then there's a different book we read every month and i provide lectures and input and then there can be discussions and things however the reason why i haven't gone through with it yet is twofold the first one is i don't know if i want all my best content to be behind a paywall because i would have like very <laughs> in-depth analysis videos prepared actually already kind of um about books like the magic mountain by thomas mann madame bovary some kafka works those videos and those lectures are going to be so much work and then I'm not sure how I feel about the fact that then those are going to be behind a paywall and maybe 40 people will ever see it and maybe 20 of those, you know, will actually watch it and maybe five of those will get something out of it. I don't know, like that just doesn't sit right with me. So I thought maybe we can do the book club, but still on YouTube that I make like an introduction video and then everyone has time to read the book for a month and then I make like an analysis video or something, you know? So so it all kind of stays on the same platform because the other reason that has held me back was that, you know, just for me personally, it would be like another whole project that I'm taking on. And I already have quite some things to do just making one video every week for YouTube. And now that I'm going to be studying in Paris and I'm studying full time anyways already, I don't know if I have the capacity to really keep it up well and to keep the quality high of some book club. So I think I struggle with the exclusivity part of a book club and the fact that it will just not reach very many people while at the same time being a lot of work i don't know still struggling with that one but please let me know what you think about it really i'm open for feedback when it comes to this so thank you for watching this video i'm so happy about how things are going on this channel and uh, yeah i appreciate you all so much and i'll see you very soon again in the next video Bye bye